In light of the developments in Japan, should Britain now reevaluate its nuclear power? In light of developments in Japan, should Britain reevaluate nuclear power? I, I don't think we need to go into the appalling nature of what's happened in Japan, because I think you'll all agree on that. But on this issue of the effect it should have on our nuclear program, Caroline Lucas. Well, I think the lesson from the terrible crisis in, in Japan is that even with the best technical expertise in the world, you can't design out natural disaster, you can't design out human error in the future, you can't design out terrorist uh, activity either. And that means that because nuclear is just so inherently risky, um, if it's not a risk that we need to run, I don't see that we should run it. And here in Britain, we are blessed with such good renewable resources. You know, we have the best in the whole of Europe, potentially. And yet we are 25th out of the 27 EU member states when it comes to how much renewable energy that we create. Now, it, we're not going to get there by renewable energy alone, obviously. It's going to be part of the solution. We need a whole range of energy efficiency, energy conservation as well. We need the Green Investment Bank to properly come on stream and to capitalise the kinds of investment that we need, for example, in marine and wave technology, where we could really be world leaders. So there are huge numbers of green jobs here that could be invested in. Instead of that, we're going down the nuclear route, which is not only unsafe in the sense that we can't possibly know what new problems we're going to face in 50 or 60 years' time. The life of a nuclear power station could be about 50 years. They're not going to be built for at least 10 or 15 by the time the planning permission has got. Who is going to be brave enough to sit here now with a crystal ball and say what kinds of challenges we might face in 65 years' time? And who's Instead going of that, to... we should be investing in renewables, energy efficiency. Go, it's safer right. and it's cheaper. You're one... You're one Green MP in the House of Commons. Who do, you think is, who, who do you think is going to change the policy? Do you look to the Liberal Democrats in the coalition and expect them to wield influence and change it? There are a number of people from a number of the different parties. In fact, I know people in all of the parties, individuals and, and small numbers of people who think that not just for the safety reasons, but for just clear-headed economic reasons, nuclear is not the right way forward. I think that the vast majority of the population now are beginning to have second thoughts. And when you hear that essentially, you know, in order to get our emissions down, energy efficiency could do that about 10 times more cheaply than the nuclear could, right. then it really does raise big questions about why we would go down a route that is not only intrinsically unsafe, but is also massively expensive. There are cheaper, safer, more effective alternatives. Kelvin McKenzie. Well, there, there aren't any cheaper um, or effective uh, alternatives. Uh, let's just face the issue, for instance, for this country. Not, don't let's look elsewhere. Japan is a country that has had a series of terrible earthquakes over the years. This country, and it was a Tory minister who said it today, we have never had anything like that. It's a, what has happened in Japan is 130,000 times worse than any earthquake that has happened in this country. 20% of our energy right now comes out of the fantastically green, fantastically green nuclear area. We need that. We need more of it. London and the southeast gets most of its power from France. Where does that come from? Almost exclusively nuclear. Nuclear is our future. I'm not saying we shouldn't be safe. I'm not saying we shouldn't. We, should, we have a complete nuclear regulatory authority, which is completely different. What happened in Japan, they, they, they were built 40 years ago. Even then, they were considered vaguely unsafe. Today, they are fantastically safe. We are in a safe environment. It is nuclear or it's nothing. A couple, of fans, so a couple of fans from the Greens party, oh, and Kelvin. literally, we'll be chopping up our furniture to keep warm. Kelvin, you're yeah. doing no... Yeah. Chris, do you think you're going to get Chris, Chris Brand, uh, uh, your, your Labour leader said nuclear power is secure and is safe. Do you agree with him? Yes, I do, broadly speaking. Totally. Speak. Uh, but broadly, broadly speaking, speaking, we obviously... What's you, broadly speaking well, as opposed it, to is? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to finish the sentence. I was, well, that's what I was asking you to do. Well, what great. Is? Well, I will try my best. Go on, then. Um, I, look, I, I think we, you always have to keep it under review. You have to make sure that at every new stage in the development of the technology, you make sure that um, the, the highest safety levels are introduced. Uh, 
Kelvin is right. I never, I'm not going to say this very often in my life. Kelvin was right to say that Britain is not Japan. We are not on the middle of a massive um, earthquake fault. And I think that that is, is significant. But also, I, I think we need to be very careful about our economic future because 30% of, um, of our energy needs come from nuclear at the moment. Those um, uh, reactors are going to be closed down by 2025. We've got to make sure that we have uh, energy security for this country in the future because I don't want to be dependent on oil and gas coming from Russia, to be honest. We have to be able to make sure, and I agree with Caroline, of course, you know, we've got to do as much as we can about renewable energies. I think it's a great shame that the government has cancelled a seven barrage. Um, but I tell you, my constituents uh, in the Rhonda, they keep on being told you've got to do more about conserving energy and you should have, and they keep on being told cavity insulation, that's going to help you in your house. All our houses were built, they're, they're, they're rubble walls that were made into solid walls in the first place. There's not much more you can well, do nuclear, about insulation. Nuclear energy insulation isn't going to properties. help you. Nuclear energy isn't going to help you with your, with your, with your heating of the space in your home. Of and course it's it's it is. It's 4%, it's 4% energy that comes from nuclear. It's 23% electricity, but only 4% of our energy actually comes from nuclear. So let's get some facts here. But, but, and if you want jobs, if you want green jobs, a much faster yeah, way of look, creating hundreds of thousands of I, green I, jobs. I, I, I agree. Green technology is not fresh you, you, come, you come to the Rhonda and say to the people who dug coal out of the mountains for, for 150 years, mm. and many of whom you know, had relatives who were killed in a very dangerous mm. um, uh, uh, industry, tell them that now they've got to have uh, wind farms right across every part of their yeah, valley. Right. No, uh, of course you are. You're always talking about something that never hurts anybody else. Well, that's not a bad thing, is it? I mean, marine, there is a huge potential right, in this country for marine and tidal. The government actually cut back on the budget for that. If we were investing in that, we could actually have a win-win solution here that would mean that we could keep our lights on, that would mean we could create hundreds of thousands of jobs, and we could um, get our emissions down. Simon Hughes, the, you... You, you wrote about uh, a lot of talk about energy security, but the Tory policy on nuclear energy being incoherent. Do you think that's still...? Yes, I've always had a different view from the Tory party. I have a similar view to the one that Caroline espoused. And Kelvin's <laughs> absolutely wrong to say that nuclear power is cheaper. We subsidise nuclear power a billion pounds a year. The decommissioning of the old fleet of nuclear power stations, Kelvin, costs over 70 billion pounds. And nobody, nobody will insure the nuclear industry. It's beyond insurance. The taxpayer, it'll be like the banks, but much worse if the nuclear in industry goes wrong, because we collectively will have to pick it up. It fails every test. It won't deliver the new uh, wave of power stations, the energy in time to be of any use. It isn't necessarily safe. You have to use dangerous materials. We've got nowhere to keep the waste safely. And the other things are on our doorstep. Caroline's absolutely right. This is a country with wave and wind and solar power. And if we had a decent European energy policy, harnessing the sun from the Mediterranean, from the North African countries, the wind from around, we would be absolutely... No, no, we would... I'm, I'm out the Mor dried tomatoes, the, the, the Moroccan, option. No, the, Moroccan, the, Moroccan, the Moroccans are absolutely clear they can produce a fantastic amount of the European grid. We should be saying the sensible Labour, Labour left us with a terrible legacy of renewable energy. We need to change that, and nuclear is absolutely not the option. And, 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 when, you say this, this. and when you say this to the energy minister, Chris Hewn, your fellow Liberal Democrat, yep. what does he say to you? Mind he your own business, go no, away. He says, he, I mean, he's, no. he, he's supporting the policy. No, no, no. no. The, the deal that was negotiated is that nuclear will only have a future if it is not subsidised. I don't believe it will survive if it's not subsidised, so, and therefore it will not have a, a substantial part but, but of the... But you, you, you believe, hang on, you believe that it's a tried, tested and failed technology, which is what Chris yeah. Hewn used to believe, it, but he no longer believes no, it. Well, what, what are the Liberal the, Democrats doing the, to pull the, their weight in the coalition the, the, on the, this? The, the People who voted no, Liberal Democrat no, expected that no, policy. No, They're not they, getting they it. negotiated a deal. We have Tory and Labour parties who are in favour of nuclear power. So again, we had to negotiate the best deal. The best deal we could get was that there would be no public subsidy. And I believe when it comes to the crunch, there will be nothing they can do without public subsidy, and it will not be possible. And we will rely on the much safer alternatives, which in the long term, uh, whether Japan had had the terrible disaster or not, will be a much safer way okay. for Britain's future Seda, and a green future for I'll, the world. I'll come to you in a second, Saida, but maybe you'd like just to hear from one or two members of our audience. So let's just do that. The woman in, in red and white shirt there. Hello. Yes. I just wanted to make a comment. We, we don't have earthquakes in this country to that magnitude, but we do, however, in our past have tsunamis. There was a tsunami of up to eight metres high that went up the uh, Bristol Channel. There are four nuclear reactors currently sited in that arena today. Okay. And, and you, sir, in the front here. 
Yeah, I mean, we're talking about um, providing extra resources, extra energy for the future. But um, what do the panel think about the uh, energy management uh, uh, that we need to be doing at the moment uh, and how we can save energy now? All right, that's the big challenge. Saeed Avasi. It's very natural when there's been the horrific situation that we've seen in Japan to respond to that. And this debate has now started about whether or not nuclear has a future. But I think it's really important for us to respond to this debate in a calm and in a practical way. I'm not actually ideologically wedded uh, to nuclear, but what I do have is a very practical belief that we need to have energy security for our country going forward. So we have to have a whole diverse range of options. Let's look at the situation where we are today. Uh, North Sea gas is running out. Uh, last year, 2009 actually, we imported 50% of our gas from Qatar. Look at the insecurity in the Middle East. Look at the fact that our, no, uh, our coal-powered um, uh, stations are going to be uh, decommissioned. We've currently got 19 nuclear reactors. 18 of them are going to be decommissioned by 2023. If you look at the way that we're using energy, just look back to 10 years ago and the number of gadgets we had and our kids had, and look at the number of gadgets we have now. There has to be a whole raft of measures, starting with using less, recycling, conserving, making sure that our houses are insulated, we're all using less energy. And then we also need to look at other options. So we need to look at clean coal and gas, we need to look at um, wind, we need to look at solar panels, but we also need to look at nuclear. Renewables are great. This government is in investing in renewables. But you know, we live in Britain and we could put wind farms across our countryside and solar panels on every single roof, but the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So why, do you, why are you doing it? Have, so why are you subsidising wind farms if they don't provide the electricity because, you need? Because it's right, David, that we have a whole diverse range of it's options. It's costing a fortune. Yeah, but it's right that we invest in different... It is absolutely right that we invest in renewables. It is right that we invest in nuclear. Mm. If you look at the extra capacity okay. that we need we by about 2025, if you look at the amount of capacity that we need by 2025, about 35% of that will be from renewables, right. about 25% will be from nuclear. I think it's important we have a calm and practical debate. Okay, the man in the second, uh, in the second row. Um, I almost feel as if this, uh, uh, this, uh, this topic's been subverted slightly, uh, mainly by Caroline Lucas. The question actually was, in light of Japan, should we reevaluate it? Now, that, impl that implies that in light of Japan's um, crisis, uh, humanitarian crisis and issues of safety, um, this has been moved on to, to about green energy and the future, um, and I find it actually quite reckless of Caroline, uh, almost irresponsible of Caroline Lucas, uh, Lucas to suggest that it, nuclear power is intrinsically unsafe. Mm. Um, that suggests that in its very virtue it is unsafe, and that is not true. <laughs> All right, Caroline Lucas. You well, can, look, can, I, can I just say that I, I think that there are inherent risks with nuclear power that, if it goes wrong, are more catastrophic than would be the case if we were talking about renewable alternatives. I mean, I'm in favour of this calm debate uh, that Saeed Ouvazi talks about, but in that calm debate, let's point out, first of all, that if we're in favour of energy security, which I am, then depending on uranium sources that come from all kinds of rather vulnerable places isn't terribly secure, number one. Number two, I completely agree with the man in the front row who talked about managing demand. You know, again, that's not as sexy as building a whole new fleet of nuclear power stations, but it's an awful lot more effective. Um, and number three, this energy gap that we've got to fill that, again, uh, uh, Saeed mentioned, nuclear power isn't going to do that anyway because it's going to take 10 to 15 years to get those new nuclear power stations up and running. Okay. It will be much quicker to do it via a range of alternatives that Simon and I have been outlining. The man up there at the back. I was just wondering what the panel's uh, reaction was to... Germany's reaction to the, uh, the crisis in Japan to shut down seven of their nuclear power plants. Kelly McKenzie, how do you respond to that? Well, I mean, even, even China, um, not unreasonably China, since it's lost over about 15 years, lost about a million people in earthquakes, uh, even they have, uh, have suspended uh, their, their build-out programme. And, I, and why, why would you blame anybody? What I am saying is, if we are relying on wind farms, right, just don't expect two and a half million to be unemployed. Expect 22 and a half million to be unemployed. But, but there is no future is in wind farms. Oh, no. You talk about subsidies. You talk about subsidies for the nuclear industry. Every time you have that wind f those wind farms, it's literally costing us about four million per per. per it's one of those. It's, 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 they know. It's a different Kelvin. It's a different league. And the reality, of, towns like this. Increasing solar power on the housing, really successful, uh, pays for itself, doesn't require any subsidy. 
The reality is we can manage, if we invest now, it will pay back very quickly. With nuclear power, A, you, you, even you would have no control over the nuclear industry because it has no local accountability, and I promise you it will cost us, collectively, you as taxpayer, a fortune. All right, I want to take a couple more members of the audience.